All right, welcome back to the channel. My name is Zach, and this is Gloria, and today's Monday, so we have a new memory verse. Gloria, are you excited? Super excited. Today's memory verse is from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. Gloria, do you know why that verse is important? Gloria, that verse is important because we have to understand that as Christians, we have the very Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead dwelling in us. And because of that, we have the same Spirit of God that dwelled in Timothy as well as Paul. And the context of this passage is that Paul is writing his last letter to Timothy, and he's imprisoned and he's about to be martyred for the Christian faith. And he's writing his last letter that we have in the New Testament. And he's writing it to Timothy to encourage him to stand fast to the faith and to, to earnestly fight for the faith and to never forsake or be ashamed of the gospel and to always preach the word and to be aware of false teachers and all these different things. And so it's a letter of encouragement to remind Timothy of the faithfulness he must have to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so even in the midst of self-doubt, or fear and all these other things. We know that none of that fear doesn't come from the Lord, but ultimately fear is a fleshly thing that we experience. And so because we are Christians, we have the spirit of God in us. And it is not a spirit of fear or a spirit of timidity, a spirit that causes us to self-doubt and to be afraid of different things, but it is a spirit of power and love and discipline. And so Paul writes this letter to Timothy to encourage him in that way. Thank you. In the verse right before this one, Paul talks about how Timothy must akindle afresh the gift of the Spirit of God that has been given to him. And so in another translation, it means to, it says to fan the flame of the gift of the Spirit that, that God has given him. So it's, an, so it's a reminder for him to, to know that he must continue to walk by the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God is dwelling in him. So he must remain faithful to the work of ministry. Because we know that the Spirit of God gives us the desire to depend on Him and also the power to do that. And so we are able to be faithful to the ministry of the gospel because of the Spirit of God dwelling in us. And so we know that from Scripture, Ephesians 3.20, that God is able to do far exceedingly and abundantly more than we are able to ask or think through the power that is at work within us, which is the Spirit of God. And so we can be encouraged by that. So when we are going through tough times of self-doubt, of not knowing what to expect, of fear of all these different outside forces from, you know, that are taking place, you know, in the world today with the pandemic, with, you know, possibly losing jobs, losing income, losing all these different things, we have to have the very Spirit of God who is a spirit of power and love and discipline to encourage us to remain faithful because he gives us those desires to depend on him as well as the power to depend on him during these times. And so that can help us and encourage us. And ultimately, Paul is saying that if Timothy relies on the Spirit of God in him, then he will be able to accomplish his ministry with excellence. And so we must know because we have repented and trusted in the person and work of Christ, we have been regenerated by the work of the Holy Spirit. We have new desires to follow after God and to seek after God and to esteem God and to be in the things of God and to know the things of God and to desire the things of God. We have that same spirit. And so as Christians, we are all called. We all have a ministry to proclaim the gospel to the nations. And so when we rely upon the Spirit of God, then he will prepare us and help us to accomplish that ministry with excellence. So we must be faithful to the ministry of the gospel, and the Spirit of God will help us to accomplish that as we rely on Him. And ultimately, when we trust in the Spirit of God, we face the trials of life with courage and, and a love for those who are trying to trouble us and cause us pain. And as we submit to the Holy Spirit of God, we grow in, in our self-control in all areas of our lives. Have you ever confessed your need to depend upon the Spirit of God and to not rely on yourself for the everyday things that you have to do in life? Rely on the Spirit of God. And all believers have these God-given endowments by the very Spirit of God that dwells in them. They have power to be effective for the ministry of that God has called upon us to spread the gospel among the nations. We have love to right, have the right attitude toward God and toward others. And we have 
discipline, to be able to apply self-control in our lives according to God's will. So when we realize that the Spirit of God that dwells in us as believers is of power and love and discipline, all of those are fruits of the Spirit, and we've talked about that before. And so you can be trusting and know that God is with you and working all things out according to His, the counsel of His will and for His for his glory and for our good. And we can know that the Spirit is with us as we rely on him in these different areas, knowing that things will happen in this life that we have no control over and that we may be fearful of. And we can trust and know because we do not have a spirit of timidity, but we have a spirit dwelling in us, the Holy Spirit, who is of power, love, and discipline. So let's look at each one of these. Power. We understand that we have power from God because of His Spirit. And because He has given us power through His Spirit, we must never misappropriate the power that He has given us for our own purposes. And we know that God provides His power to accomplish His purposes through us. When our trust is only in Him and our desire is to only serve Him, He is both willing and able to do far above anything that we can ask or imagine through us because of the power that is working in us. And we know that the Spirit of God that is in us is a spirit of love, and it's an agape love. It's a love that God demonstrates to us that has a love for others and not for self. You know, a phileo love, which we talk about in Greek, is a love that is emotional and conditional. And we also talk about a love which is an eros love, which is sensual and selfish. But ultimately, we have an agape love in us. And so we see that that because we have that love from God at the moment of conversion, we're able to demonstrate our love to others and towards God accurately and properly. The love that we have for God is constant. It never ends. It is a self-denying grace that says to others, I will give myself away on your behalf. And when we direct that kind of love to God for which it originally came from, it is saying that I will live to serve you and to serve you only. Because ultimately, if our first love is ourself, then we only seek to please ourselves in this life. We only seek our own welfare, our own objectives, and our own comforts, and our own successes. But when we have an agape love, the love of the Spirit of God dwelling in us, we will seek to please Him and to serve others. And finally, discipline. Discipline carries the idea literally of a sense of sound mind and sound judgment. But it also carries the idea of a self-controlled, disciplined and properly prioritized mind. It allows us to experience success without becoming proud and to suffer failure without becoming bitter or hopeless. The disciplined life is the divinely ordered life in which godly wisdom is applied to every situation in one's life. When we live by the godly discipline that our Lord so graciously supplies us, every part of our life and our priorities are put in the right order. And we live in in this life to seek wholeheartedly to advance the cause of Christ. And we are wholeheartedly devoted to doing that. So remember, if you have repented and trusted in the person and work of Christ, you have the Spirit of God, and it is not a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. All right, Gloria, that is our verse today. Does that make sense? You're asleep? Okay. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. But if you love the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and joining our SDG community. And if you'd like to follow me on other social media platforms, here's my Twitter and Instagram handle. And you can also follow us on Facebook. Type in the SDG by ZAC and a page will come up and you can follow us. And if you'd like to support us on Patreon or to get some SDG merch, the links are in the description. This is the SDG by ZAC. Soli Deo Gloria, to God alone be the glory, with Memory Verse Monday with Gloria. We wish you providential blessings. Take care. We'll catch you next time. Gloria, look at this mess you made. Look at this mess you made.